Welcome back to another episode in the Tennessee Titans franchise. Today we're handling week 5 in our 5th season, so it's S5, W5. Super nice symmetry right there. Thank you for tuning in. So happy that you decided to join me. Today we actually have quite a few things to take care of. We've got player negotiations. That's a big part right now. Um, up until the trade deadline, uh, we've got a forecast for heavy rain. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Patriots roster. And we are, of course, uh, also going to be doing weekly strategy, player upgrades, then the game. But we have to do, uh, have to take one step back. Uh, before we dive into any of that, we just need to uh, kind of fix the shaping of the team a little bit more. Look at that Joe Alt here, right? And he's been on my mind a lot. Um, so we're going to be ta <laughs> taking him and just putting him aside for the moment, right? So it is an Isaac. Certainly want to keep him around. JL Skinner, uh, we don't need him anymore, to be truthfully honest, because we got Taylor Colon. He just dropped in our lap, and now we have two very similar uh, rated uh, strong safeties, and I don't need JL Skinner anymore. So that is a big thing right now. I think we can package deal him and just send him somewhere else. Uh, we've got Russ Randolph, who uh, declined our first offer. Um, for for his contract, he has played one or two games. He, I don't think that he would be massively expensive. Uh, but then I took a look at some practice squad dudes, and we even have a player in there that's uh, I think 23 and is 73 rated or something like that. So I think we could just replace Russ Randall if we don't have to hold on to him. Uh, Jalen Wilcox, this is one that I'm thinking about, um, and then Damien Bushrod. Is another one of those. Um, he uh, didn't want the initial offer that we gave him. And to be honest, I really don't feel like giving him way much more money than this here. Um, he's not such a standout player. We brought him in out of free agency. Um, so what I would be doing now, I would be clearing up some space on the team. Because we also need to sign a third quarterback. Currently, we only have two, as you well know. Uh, so we just have to create some space um, to really fill in the gaps. So that's what we're going to be doing. Russ Randolph, we're going to release you. There we go. We're just clearing up some cap space. Um, as you can see, the cap space still isn't really going up much more because of, of the contract offer for Joe Alt, uh, who is really demanding a huge, huge sum. And I'm really very wary about this one here. Sunny Styles, I think we can keep him around with the fifth year option. But even if he doesn't decide to stay, which is okay by me, we have Taylor Colon on the team right now, who uh, we just brought in and who has a few more years on his contract. Uh, if we were to give Sonny Styles away, just package him along um, with uh, other players. Uh, for instance, Shale Skinner, that's a strong safety duo package. I think that could work quite well. But for now, we're going to hold on to him. Um, and I will just be uh, packaging a few other dudes. Adisa Isaac. Let's just get this one here done. I feel like, uh, you know, at this age, I, I think that he he would really be uh, a good addition to the team. Uh, he does value financials. Uh, he likes a warm weather state, which Tennessee is more or less. Uh, he's close to home. That's good. And his interest level is pretty high. So there we have this situation and I feel like that is something that can work quite well. I'm just seeing that Justin Patton could also fill in here uh, if we really have problems. Um, I'm going to be hiking up his salary just a little bit here. Uh, let's go with 3.8 and let's also push his bonus up a little bit. Come on, man. All right. Adisa Isaac stays. This is a big deal. Now the right edge position has been filled. JL Skinner going to be packaging him along with... Uh, with our third center, uh, Aaron Brewer. I don't really need him uh, anymore. And I feel like he deserves a shot at another team. Uh, Harold Landry added, added to me with Adam Rory uh, just to fill the gaps uh, behind those players, just to add a little bit of depth. But that is no big deal, actually. If they were to leave, um, neither of these is really uh, a huge addition to the team anyways. Um, and Jalen Wilcox, definitely one that I would like to keep around. Um, looking at what he wants, I think this is more than negotiable. 23.74. I would like to keep him. However, of course, he's not. Uh, he's not really happy. He doesn't have a mentor at the position. Uh, no players have the franchise QB tag, and uh, it's not a big market. So there we go. He's not really that crazy about it. But I feel if I give him 
a longer term deal, just hike this up a little bit. Maybe we can get him to stay. Offer is perfect, right? So Jalen Wilcox stays long term, that's fantastic. And now we have 3.4 mil left cap space. Just to give you an idea of what Joe Alt wants or what his last offer was, this was the last offer. Um, he said we were getting close, but we're not quite there yet. So if I were to hike this up to, let's say 13 and 13, you can see on the right hand side that it goes up to it, it crazy heights, 31 mil in 2034. All right. I mean, who knows if we're going to be around by then, um, but he would be 31 then. And I really don't feel like that is exactly um, is, is, is a right message to send, right? The cap hit would be 21.9 mil right now. He's expecting, if you look up top, 30.8 mil per year. I know I can stretch it a little bit, but this would give me 2.5 um, of remaining cap for the next year. And then it would just get lower and lower because it keeps rising. So this is the reason why I'm really extremely tempted to, um, to just uh, hand him off to another team uh, get a first round pick for that and just, you know, just replace him. We do have good players on the positions. So uh, that's something that I'm going to show you in a second. GL Skinner, we're going to be trading him away. Added to me, out of a worry, will stay. Harold Landry will also stay for the time being in Sunny Styles. Um, we're going to have uh, the uh, option accepted at the end of this season. But we need the cash to do that. So we need to clear up some space anyways. Plus, I don't really like going all the way here. So going to the NFL rosters, uh, we now have cleared two spaces on the roster. We will put one additional player here. Um, the running backs are fine, fullbacks are fine, wide receivers are fine, tight ends are fine. Now here we are at the left tackle position. As you can see, Patrick Paul 25 and 78 is my backup player here. So definitely that would be a big, big drop off. At left guard, we currently have Jack Lindsley with no backup player. So we will have to backfill here. Um, but I have a player lined up for that anyways. At center, Aaron Brewer is just a little bit surplus to requirements. I don't think we need to keep him around. Uh, the penalty is still there, of course, but I don't care about that. And we'll just move him on and save on the cap. Uh, Graham Barton and Natani Muti are a good setup here. And at right tackle of goal, these two players, David Presley. This is a player that I could really see uh, slotting him in over on the left hand side, um, using him as a left tackle if we don't get another prospect player or whatever that is really going to help us out at that position. On left edge, we've got James Houston. This is all fine. Right edge is fine. Uh, D-tackle. We're going to add another D-tackle. I'm going to have three there. Uh, the left outside linebacker looks good. We've got the mid linebacker situation sorted. We've got the right outside linebackers, the corners, the free safeties, and the strong safeties. And down here, you can see Jail Skinner. We're going to be cutting him because we just don't need him. And uh, looking at the practice squad, we have a D-tackle lined up here. It's James Choice, 2370. He is a scheme fit. And uh, we are going to be signing him from the practice squad. We will have to negotiate with him as well, give him a new deal because he's just moving up from the practice squad. And looking here, we've got Tyrell Bullet. This is a player that I would like to add to the uh, offensive line just to get, you know, get into it. 2273, this is definitely good enough to be a backup player. Um, and looking at Eric Lynch, who is a right guard, 21 and 70. You know, he's a, again, as a rookie, as a learning player, I really think this does make sense. So Tyrell Bullet will now be moved from the practice squad to the regular squad. And then we also have Eric Lynch here. That's a rookie who I'm really side eyeing to add to the uh, to add to the regular lineup. Uh, we also have, where did he go? We also have a strong safety here. That's Ty Walker, 2373. He can also slot in and Walter Griffin. That's a rookie running back, 2176. I'll let him grow here. Let's see if JD Bradley will be around. Let's see if we have to reshuffle our running back situation. If Ty J Spears keeps getting injured, um, I do hope that is not going to be the case. So uh, we also have Mike Gray here. That's a left tackle, but I was looking at Lynch. Here we go. So let's just add him up there as well, uh, just to see how how we are filling the team currently. All right, looking at this uh, situation, Joe Alt is still injured, so we can't trade him right now. Um, but just hypothetically speaking, we just need an additional player here as a backup. Uh, we're going to be giving away Aaron Brewer. 
Um, we could slot Lynch over on left guard, uh, but I think I will be putting a target bullet there. Um, and maybe either Presley will take left tackle or uh, um, or uh, another player that we're going to be trading for. But let's just see how that pans out. Right now, um, I will just be putting Lynch over there as a backup player. He is 21, and I really feel like he uh, yeah he should should get a shot at the uh, starting lineup here. Always like incorporating rookies. That is just a fun part of the experience. All right, but enough for now. Um, we will be putting Tar Bullet down uh, into the uh, practice squad again. We can track him up anytime, and I feel like we will be doing that as soon as Joel is fit again and ready to be traded. But now let's just clear some cap. Let's just clear some roster spaces. Um, I will be trading uh, the center and the strong safety, and I'll just get back to you as soon as I have the results. Rough negotiations here. But we got it done. And uh, you might be asking yourself, why exactly is he offering two experienced players, three seventh rounders and a third round pick uh, for a uh, 74 rated right tackle? Well, I'm gonna show you in a second. Sean Price, uh, 21 year old rookie out of Florida, six foot seven, 338 pounds. And uh, yeah, well, he's got a hidden dev trait. This is what I really liked about him. Plus he's super young. When you look at his ratings, he already has a pretty good strength, 91, 55th ranked left tackle. Of course, he's got a lot to learn and he's not as developed as uh, Joe Altis, of course he can't be. But I'm actually pretty confident that this wasn't the worst trade-off. Um, it gives us the flexibility, right? Um, we now have Dijon Price who has a hidden death trade, so let's see how that one will work out. Um, we also have uh, Jack Lindsley over here the superstar dev trade um, we're, we're back filling quite nicely here um, we've got good good succession plans good replacements for the moment um, I really feel like this offensive line isn't really losing its competitiveness so that's a big part uh, something that's very important to me and uh, yeah I feel like we actually managed to handle this pretty well um, if we take a look up top now, we've got 52 out of 53. The players that are up for negotiation, we can see that we only have a few players left that we need to deal with here. And I am feeling more and more confident that I do not want to keep uh, Joe Alt around. I just don't think it's worth the money. Um, I just don't feel like I want to pay him 25 mil per season, even if he's such a great player uh, for me right now. But we just have to find solutions to deal with that. Um, at some point, the cap space will end, and then we will have to deal with that. All right, so at a out of a worry, I will not be re signing him. Harold Landry, not be re signing him. And Sonny Styles, uh, yeah, also uh, not, not negotiating right now. We'll just have to accept the option later. All right, for now, I think I'm done here. Um, I will be filling up the uh, practice squad uh, off camera. Um, now we're going to be taking a look at the heavy rain forecast. Well, it looks like it looks like it's going to be raining for the entire game this week. Probably won't take long for the conditions to get pretty sloppy. What's our plan on the, on offense? Well, I think we're going to run the ball. That is the only way we can really have success here. With a slick football and rough footing, it'll be hard to establish a good rhythm in the passing game. So practice your handoffs because we're going to be doing a lot of it this week. All right, you're grounded. Beat the Patriots, rack up 150 plus rushing yards. All right, we don't get any buffs though. So that might be a little bit of a drawback, but uh, yeah, we're not gonna be deterred here. The Patriots look fantastic, by the way. 91 offense, 89 defense, 90 overall. Very similar to us, by the way. So very even game, at least we're at home. Uh, but yeah, now let's take a look at the New England Patriots roster. So now the Patriots roster, here we go. Mac Jones is still the starting QB, 28 and 92. Looking decent with a normal dev trade. He certainly has a lot of good stats still in there. Uh, some regression, uh, but overall still 18th ranked QB. So let's just be wary of his talents. Julian Sayan, 21-81. Very nice replacement player already. <laughs> kind of scratching at his heels. 
hidden depth trait. Looking pretty good, well done, good draft. Running back Elijah Mitchell, 29.84, Jimmy Beverly and Enrique Barlow. These two here uh, look like a pretty good combination. Elijah Mitchell joining from the 49ers, right? Yeah, 49ers, then the Arizona Cardinals, and now the New England Patriots. Fullback is Hunter Lipka, 27 and 74, with that cap on, on the picture. That's pretty cool, dude. Wide receiver is Juju Smith, Schuster, 3088. We've got Rashad Bateman joining from the Ravens. We've got Roma Dunsey, who they drafted, Greg Gray, and Taylor Dawson. These two down here would, I would say, decent backup wide receivers. Roma Dunsey, certainly a very solid wide receiver. And these here are a little bit on the older side, Juju, but still very good. Uh, experienced wide receivers certainly going to be a good combination with Mac Jones here. Mike Kosicki is the leading tight end, 3180. We've got Benjamin Yorosek here, 2579, and Sam Abram. That's a rookie. Benjamin Yorosek looks like he can take over at uh, pretty much the next chance he's given, uh, but still looking at like a very solid tight end. Route. The offensive line, Jedek Wills Jr., one of the best uh, left tackles in the game uh, from the Browns now here. Troy Fultano will be the starter here, of course. At left guard, Cole Strange, 29-84. Behind him, Akeem Wheeler, 24-74. Uh, At center, we've got Ethan Pocic, 32-79. I think also from the Browns, if I'm not mistaken. Stan Randolph, a uh, rookie, 23-77, ready to pounce, ready to take over. Very nice succession planning here. Right guard is Mike Onwenu, 29-95. Bo Limmer, 25-74 behind him. Good backup, but Michael Wenu, a very, very good right guard. And at right tackle, we've got JC Latham, 24-97. Eddie Wolf, that's a rookie behind him. So quick look at the offensive line here. You can see Jedrick Wills, 89 rated. Cole Strange, 84 rated. Ethan Pochett, 79. Mike Wenu, 95. And JC Latham, 97. This is a very good offensive line. A very, very good offensive line. On left edge, we've got Christian Barmore, 28-87. Jabari Zuniga, so Christian Barmore will be gunning for us. He's a good one at that position. Very dangerous, very quick. High strength, 93 rated, by the way. Right edge, Trey Hendrickson, formerly of the Bengals, 32-86. Behind him, we've got Lewis Flanagan. Again, very close to his overall already, so we'll be taken over by the end of the season, I would imagine. Looking very good, even as high strength, 92 versus 85. Nice setup on, on up front here. D-Tech, Devon Hamilton, 30 and 85. Behind him, Jacqueline Roy and Carl Massey. Jacqueline Roy, uh, formerly with the Vikings, and Devon Hamilton, let's just see where he came from before I say something wrong. Yeah, Jackson with Jaguars. I was about to say the Dolphins, but yeah, no. Jackson with the Jaguars. Very nice uh, setup here. Both hard to beat, hard to stop. This will be quite tough. Left outside linebacker, Corey Foreman, 24 and 81. Looking very good here. Backup, Tariki Smith. Mid linebacker, Martin Mapu, Cody Barton, and Connor Williams. Cody Barton is extremely hard to beat, even if his overall doesn't suggest it. And Martin Mapu, both very good mid linebackers. Right outside linebackers, Josh Uchi, a superstar, luckily for us, injured. So Kyle Parnell or John Smith will be taken over here. Other than that, this middle linebacker or this linebacker group would be looking absolutely devastating. Cornerback is Christian Gonzalez, 25-98. David uh, Ikbenosun, he's injured, so Marcus Jones and Christian Gonzalez will be the uh, two starting uh, cornerbacks here. Will Chapman and Bradley Kelly are the backup players, but overall this is a very dangerous looking cornerback room. Free safety, uh, Manny Hooker, I think we know him very well, 29-87, and Jabril Peppers. So, Amani Hooker returns. Will he haunt us or will he hurt us? I don't know yet, but I still think it was the right decision to let him go. He just uh, was about to get a lot of cash, and uh, I really didn't see that happening. Strong safety is James Williams, 2587. Elijah Hatcher and Chris Stevenson are nothing but backups, but James Williams looking pretty good, 2587. 27th ranked strong safety. Li nice, nice attributes right there. Uh, the kicker, Markel Foster and George Russell, I never get why they get two spots, you know, waste two spots on kickers, but whatever. And a punter, that's Bryce Barringer. All right, so we've got that handled. Now let's take a look at weekly strategy. Because weekly strategy will be uh, defining for this week, I think. So, short pass, it is definitely. Let's take a look here at the practice intensity 
for the defense. Again, we're going to train the backups. I want to have Neely Wilcox ready to go. Redditch, uh, Adisa Isaac, just re-signed to a new deal. On uh, the D-tackle position, we're going to go with the splits. I want to have Jordan Hall, Jarvis Ford, and Choice uh, getting uh, experience. Lift that south linebacker, Glenn Sprinkle. Who else? Mid linebacker with splits. We're going to split this here as well. Maybe at some point in time, Patton will overtake people's. We'll see how that pans out. Splits for the cornerbacks and uh, starter and starter for the uh, safety positions. Next up, let's take a look at the offensive game plan. How do we handle this one? It suggests the outside run to avoid Josh Uchi, but he's injured anyway. So we're going to go inside as always. We have to uh, get 150 rushing yards anyways this week. So there we go. All right, we're looking at the few changes here. You can see Geno Smith uh, in the quarter, uh, quarterback column. So we are going to be focusing on the backups a little bit more will levis might might also get some get some reps but i'm really looking to get my kramer up and ready in case something happens to will will smith uh, will levis um so will and gino and levis and smith and kramer jesus a lot of a lot of lot of stuff going on here all right uh splits for the running backs that works for me splits for the wide receivers works for me um we're gonna go with the tight end split as well on left tackle, you can now see we've got Dijon Price in there as a starter already with a hidden death trait. I want to reveal that as quickly as possible. Uh, Jack Lindsley now on left guard with uh, Lynch behind him. Uh, so, of course, we are going to be going with a starter at left tackle with a starter at left guard. Um, with let, Let's go splits here at center. I think we can also go splits here, but I would like to get Lindsley trained up as quickly as possible. Right guard, certainly the starter. And on right tackle, we're going to go splits because Presley can also make do with some experience points. On the team profile, we're going to uh, shuffle things a little bit. Jack Lindsley, I want to train him up quick. Glenn Sprinkle can always use that. Adisa Isaac, Neil Wilcox and Justin Patton. But we might even go for somebody else. Uh, namely for uh, Deshaun Price because I feel like he definitely needs a bump and a boost and all that. All right, next up, weekly game plan. Get one interception. We're going to get 200 rushing yards. We have to focus on that anyways. We're going to try and allow 20 points or less. That might get tricky, but let's just shoot for the stars here. And we're going to go with 450 offensive yards if we have to get 200 uh, to, if we get 200 offensive yards, then I would get five points. That is going to be super helpful. And now off to training. Wow. All right. So that training session brought in two new injuries. Assis al Shayer, mid linebacker, and Josh Wiley, my fullback. So we're taking a little bit of flexibility away looking at the tight ends. Plus, he's a backfiller there. But uh, yeah, mid linebacker, not that big of a deal. Uh, Joe Alt will be back in two weeks. And from then on, we're going to have quite a few players back again. Really looking forward to that. Um, at least it's going to be within the trade deadline um, so that we can get some value for Joe Alt. And even if we don't, we might just hold on to him and uh, let him go then. Let's upgrade the players a little bit here. Let's see who gets an upgrade. Amarius Mims goes up even more. Pass protector. He's now a 92 rated player. 91 base, of course. Next up, Amari Rogers, such a great receiver. I really, really love what he's doing. Very reliable, very good. He's not a big man. He's not one for the for the flash, but he's certainly always there when I need him. Elisa Isaac goes up to an 80. That's a base 80 without any modifications. Antoine Wells Jr. gets some points into his playmaker ability. At age 25, he certainly is an important part of our wide receiving group. Jack Lindsley also gets some more points. I'm just buffing power as much as I can here to make sure that he's ready for that. Tijon Price also gets an upgrade point. I'd like to get him into the, well, maybe low 80s. And well, if he's a star, then he's a star. If he's a superstar, I think I'm just going to high five myself right now. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Mike Kramer, no more points for him, but a 75 already. So this is very very good looking actually pretty happy that we picked him uh, manage staff let's also dump some points into here i uh, don't want to put any more points into the head coach so i think it is time to just uh, also get the defense a little bit pumped the stacked box i wanted to upgrade that last week couldn't do that we're going to boost speed for uh, the outside linebackers so we're going to go that path 
man secondary boost awareness, agility uh, for free safeties or cornerbacks. And over here, we already decided to go this path here. Um, I think I'm going to be boosting the uh, free safeties. We never have problems getting good corners anyways. Um, but, uh, you know, the safeties, I think they can just need a little bit of help. And with that said, though, guys, we're finally done with all the prep. We had a lot of things to take care of this week. We will now be going for the game. So here we go. Nissan Stadium in the rain, as expected. This is fun. Player Spotlight. Who's this going to be? We're going to see Ty J Spears. Last week, 124 yards. Very, very good. Then he got injured. Carded off. Um, this week we have to get 150 yards, so let's try and get that. Here are the Patriots. I gave them their alternate uniform. I really like the red and the white plus the alternate Pat Patriot logo. Also, to really uh, distinguish them from our alternate home option a little bit more. Will Levis ready and pumped. And I myself have to say I'm also pretty pretty ready for this game actually I, I want to see how the offensive line performs I want to see how we do here with our uh, prospects uh, prospective new additions on the left side we did change it up quite a bit Joel to Peter Skoronsky were super solid and now we have a very different setup there with uh, Price and Lindsley again I think it's the right call to make all right that was super quick <laughs> our defense just been overwhelmed we're gonna try and get running immediately they of course will try and stop us in that regard and can I just put out there he just needed 19 yards uh, 19 seconds to get that touchdown we're stopped very quickly here the defense for the Patriots is very very solid so we're gonna have to be very creative here let's set up a mesh spot Make sure we get some yardage. Maybe go with the curved inside zone here. They're going to react to that anyways. And there we go. First down. Can we evade? Oh, stiff arm. I tried it, but no, <laughs> number three was too strong, too tough. Really latched onto Tai J Spears here. And that was James Williams, by the way, with that tackle. Look at that freaking big dude. Jesus Christ. No getting rid of him. Wow. Look at the size of that man. Wow. All right. Left side worked pretty well, though. We're going to set up a spacing switch. And then we are going to reshuffle into something like an inside zone split here. Maybe drag him out of position a little bit. And work on getting those yards. We have to win the game as well. Oof. Now we're 97 just coming from the side. We lose a yard. We were up to 20 yards and now we're down to uh, 21 yards. And now we're down to 20. So there we go. Let's set up this one here again. I think I like this play, but we're going to try the inside zone. We're just going to try and hammer it into them. Here we go. Oh, this is actually this looked pretty good up until I saw number 25. Jack Jones coming from the left side with a hard stop here on Ty J Spears. A halfback quick base, a left hand side, straight run setup. Number 72 price. Not revealed yet. We don't know what he is. There we go. We're gonna go across that line. Oh, that was very good. And again, number three is there. Look at the big dude. Jesus freaking Christ, man. 34 is also pretty tall. Wow. Alright, let's go to the halfback zone weak left hand side again. Let's just keep hammering this. Taiji Spears slowly but surely getting tired. So do we do we switch this up a little bit? Let's go with the bench. Just to change it up a little bit. I've got Kyle Phillips and Oconquo in my sights. There we go. Very nice pass here. Will Levis. Very controlled pass. 16 yards on the first attempt. Martin Mapu. Just everywhere. One of those two linebackers. Cody Barton. And Marty Mapu a very very good combination and of course Christian Gonzalez number 20 back there cornerback not making things much easier Spears slowly but surely getting getting back some of his stamina number 56 I need a block that was beautiful can we evade we cannot evade 53 yards 
in the first quarter. If we keep at it in this pace, then uh, we will have no problems getting the 150. But it will certainly be um, the order of the day to win. Rushing yards 75. Elijah Mitchell absolutely wrecked our defense. Absolutely wrecked it. All right, let's go. Double slants. Looking for, well, Burks, Rogers. Why do we go with something different here now? 11 seconds, not enough time to react. So we're just going to see who's available. And there we go. Traylon Burks is available. Traylon Burks, my wide receiver number one. Fantastic catch, even in the rain. A lot of pressure. Skoronski going absolutely mad. As he always does. As he always does. I feel really good about this switch over to center and finding different solutions. There are also realistic solutions, right? I traded with the with the Bears, they had Darnell right on right tackle. So they didn't really need a new rookie right there um, that they needed to, de to develop. Uh, they were looking for a center. They now have an experienced center. They were looking for a free safety. They could use JL Skinner at uh, free safety as well. All right, let's put someone in motion here. And we're going to go up top. Number 25, Jack Jones coming from the side with the drag on Ty J Spears. I just want to kind of avoid getting getting some players injured again, as you might suspect. Oh, my God. Amari Rogers with a jumping catch attempt here. And that was... Not going to work. 94 will now. Third and two. Let's try and get the direct route here. Halfback a lead. Right. I just want to have that first down. Here we go. 64 yards. A little bit slower going right now. But we are going to do what we can here. Crazy play here. Crazy play. Set up really, really uh, pass heavy. Oh my dear, number 90, <laughs> very quickly detaching from number 78, whoever that was. Dislocated shoulder, alright, so Natani Muti takes over for Graham Barton as we are hit by the two minute warning. Is it fourth and something? No, second and ten, alright, let's go. Tight end angle, got Tai J Spears back there. Just hit Phillips, just get up, uh, pick up that first down. That is sort of my idea here. That is poor accuracy and out of touch. I don't like that. I don't like giving away downs. Third and ten now. Verticals. Chig Okonkwo. Let's try and get the distance here. We want to get the distance. Amari Rogers. Oop. All right, just hold on here. Survive the contact. Go up to the 22 clock will be taken down and uh, the big man Whew. this is Cody Barton and man James Williams really we have to avoid him we have to avoid him he reminds me a lot of Tremaine Edmonds he's also big big freak in nature very strong can we hit them quickly here that is the question there's no running right now. We're not we're not attempting a run play right now. I just want to see. And there we go. Perfectly executed. Will Levis and Chigo Conquo are a perfect combination for that play. Come on defense. All right, defense doesn't stop him. Again, probably some better clock management could have helped us. We're just going to try and get some yards in on uh, this here play. Yeah, getting stuck, getting stuck, getting stuck. And that's going to be the first half. Zone fake jet. And the clock will be taken down. 14 and 14 is uh, the halftime scoreboard standing. We go into the break here. With uh, the game looking more or less balanced. Just going to have to focus more on the running. I don't really like that. Because it always means that we have to... Um, be pretty one-sided and I think it's one of our strengths to not be one-sided so Antoine Wells 
That was almost going to be looking good. That was almost going to be looking good. I felt like I was able to break through on the right hand side, but in the end I got clogged up. We restart at the 26, so we're, now we're going to focus more on the run play. Usually in the second half, things get a little bit more difficult. We uh, pick up more injuries. The going gets rougher. Pitch gets deeper. And as you can see, we're not getting big runs. But slowly but surely, we're just moving ahead here. Halfback ISO, right hand side. Let's go, Ty J Spears. Here we go. Another five yards, and I'm going to be happy. Boom, number 91 comes from behind. Just absolutely wrecking Ty J Spears. I'd really like to get this. If we can get this, we're going to get a huge boost for the offensive line. But to be honest, winning the game is, uh, of course, way more important than anything else. Come on, Ty J. Mm, Cody Barton catching up. Natani Muti going down. Man, the right guard position currently with a few problems going into the tunnel. Let's just hope he returns quite quickly. Second and six, left-hand side run. I always underestimate how fast midline backers are. Mm. Third and five, one yard only. As you can see, the run game is very impeded today. Very impeded. Smash return. That is the setup we're going to choose. And I would really like a very direct route here. Can we have something? Yeah, something like this. Quick reshuffle. Third and five. Here's the handoff. And that is a first down. Pushed across the line by my own offensive lineman. Very important. Very important. This is a money hooker. Bruce Sternum. Substitute Dylan McMahon will be taken over now at that position. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh my lord. All right. All right, here we go. Oh my god. Number nine, he was just walking through. Just came straight at Tai J Spears. There wasn't one block in there. Not one block. And they're lining up incredibly tightly. Incredibly tightly, as you can see. There we go. A hard hit in the back here by number five, Jabril Peppers. Third and five now. What do we go with here? I want to have a good, safe, and clever play. Let's just go with a mesh spot. I've got the option Oconquo or Burks. Maybe Phillips if I feel like it. But uh, there we go. Just pick up that first down. Keep the drive going. Maybe get momentum our way a little bit more in the rain here. Will Levis finding Traylon Burks. I feel like we could have probably really managed the clock just ever so lightly better in the first half. Can I hot route him? Uh, no. All right, whatever. Let's just go. There we go. This is all I felt like I was through. Come on, man. Amani Hooker again gets a hand on us. <laughs> and we're stopped. And we're stopped. Really fighting hard for those rushing yards. It's looking very balanced. The rush plays, we have 19 and they have 3. And we've got the same yardage. I think that says a lot about the defense. They've got a very good uh, rush stopping defense. Come on, man. The offensive line is not really producing any uh, any time here, and we need that. All right, drive wheel time. Drive wheel time. Mm -hmm. There we go. Quick reshuffle here. Ty J Spears, come on, man. Let's get the first down again. I know it's hard. I know it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of contact here happening. Elijah Hatcher. 36. Fourth and one. 
46 yard field goal or a run play so of course we're gonna go for a run play I'm gonna try and get this I think going for anything else would be the bad call right now did we get it first and ten I think we're just held by inches yeah we didn't get it for fuck's sake all right that could have gone better that could have really gone way better Mac Jones come on defense all right a field goal basically we're not changing anything about our situation um, let's go verticals and I'm uh, catching myself that I am really currently uh, forcing those run plays a little bit more Trey Hendrickson off with an injury halfback ISO clock has stopped anyways it's three yards let's go a touchdown and we win a field goal and we draw the game and now we are entering that part of the of the game where we have to find the right balance between pass plays and run plays because I really don't want to have any issues here so here we go pass is away tried to turn it number 20 was there I think that's Christian Gonzalez. Christian Barmore now with an injury. That's one of the edge rushers, number 90. Always nasty. Always nasty. So, again, single back bunch. Let's go with the halfback zone weak. Just a slightly different formation. Let's try. Let's just try and get that first down. Be focused. Pushed forward. And here we go, 102 yards currently. If we close down the field with the running... Jesus, man, they're absolutely lining up very, very tightly here on Chig. And one of those two was going to be a rusher. So we could just go for a pass play here. Breakthrough. Amani Hooker probably not that happy. Good, we're going to choose a formation where we have the running back behind us. Inside zone, curved run. Oh, damn it, midline backer is adjusting already. And uh, we're going to get going now. We need the time. All right, let's go outside. Let's get the first down, but let's keep running. Corey Foreman, number zero, injured. There we go. Verticals it is. High chase Spears is there and there are gaps. There are gaps. Alright, we're gonna try and mislead them here with this RPO. Tai Chi Spears 118 yards. Will Levis certainly doing a good job here. I mean if we go for this. I'm gonna go for this. If we don't get the 150 rushing yards, well, at least, at least we get the win. No boosts here, but I'd really like to get this against the Patriots here. And here we go. Stepping inside, it's a touchdown. 12 seconds on the clock. 20 versus 17. And unless Mac Jones goes absolutely up to glory. This is what I love about Will Levis, by the way. He's just super precise, even in clutch moments. I mean, the formation was clear as day that they were going to try and rush me. Kind of caught up here with Jake, but he manages to push forward into the end zone. Could even have wasted a little bit more time and we get the ball back, man. That is awesome at the 29. Don't think that we're going to go for a run here. We're going to go for a 46-yard field goal. It is windy. Oh, and I'm going to miss this one. Jesus. I clicked very quickly. The arc was coming down too fast. Would have liked 24 versus 17. But like this, 21 versus 17 is also good enough. 
And we win against the Patriots in this actually rather difficult rain game. Forcing the run wouldn't have made any sense as we pick up this win here. Well done. Titans, you came through in difficult conditions. Will Levis, 83% completion rate. Now that is nice. Three touchdowns, deservedly so. 137 yards on the rushing. Yeah, we didn't get it. 118 yards. And there was a lot of struggle in there. On average, 4.9. Look at this one. Jamie Beverly, 24.6. Well, and we had 24 attempts to get uh, 118 yards. On the receiving side, Jig, as always, the absolute beast himself. Uh, 105 yards, 70.5 on average, and two touchdowns. Those are those vertical plays. Just love those. Juju Smith Schuster did well. Traylon Burks was also pretty important. And a few other players chipping in. Amari Rogers had that drop. Would have been important to not do that. We had quite a good performance by our offensive line, actually. Quite a few pan pancake blocks. Sacks allowed zero. That's very good. On defense, Kenneth Murray Jr. got the solo tackle lead. Uh, title, uh, total tackles. There's a few in here, but no surprises. Marty Mapu, Cody Barton, and Amani Hooker were very good. Tackles for loss. Carlos, uh, Carl Massey. Christian Barmore, sacks zero, interception zero, and I'm sorry Evan McPherson, but that last missed field goal, yeah, that's just entirely on me. Preparing for conditions like that is near impossible, so it must be a relief to be standing here as the winner. I can't choose my reply, so I reckon it's going to be something like, yeah, did our best to formulate a plan of attack, but all that goes out the window the second you step on the field and into an inch of water. Yeah, it was really rough going. So let's see, what, what do we get? The entire team has earned 1,000 XP. Good. I think we could have gotten more out of this scenario, but I don't really care about that. We got the win. We get some upgrade points. That is super important. And we get one more win in the win column against a team that we usually struggle against. Next week, we're going to be playing the Miami Dolphins at home, then the Ravens at home. And that what makes me super happy is that I feel like we really solved the situation in the offensive line without going overboard uh, on our cap room. So yeah, I'm actually pretty hyped about that. Very happy. Hope you enjoyed today's game. If you did, do drop a like, please subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you a lot. See you next time.